Hello and welcome, my name's Anne and I'm going to be showing you around today. This is our family business, Beckford Silk in Gloucestershire, and we're a small team of people who specialise in designing, printing and making silk scarves and ties, mainly for the heritage market, that's museum and gallery shops, but more recently we've also moved into producing dyed and printed silks for dressmaking. All the dyeing, printing and finishing is done here at Beckford, so very much made in the UK. We sell from here and through our online shop and our scarves and silks are sent all over the world. My father started the business back in 1975. He and my mother originally worked in catering, running a number of local cafes and restaurants. But my father's always had a passion for colour and he wanted to set up a business that used colour in some way. He hit on the idea of printed silk, started in a very small way indeed, very experimental, just in a workshop at the bottom of the garden and with passion, determination and hard work has developed Beckford Silk into what it is today. At Beckford Silk we're a small team of people and we work on a lot of very interesting um, design projects, um, particularly for museums, cathedrals, um, galleries, that type of thing. The way that we work is that we will have a conversation with a museum or heritage customer. Um, they perhaps would like us to develop a design based on something in their collection or perhaps for a special exhibition. So in the first instance they will send us a number of photographs um, and we will start to pull out decorative details from those photographs. Often the way that we start to develop a design is actually in hand drawing. We will draw elements, we will trace off elements and use those hand drawings, scan those into the computer to start manipulating to produce a finished design. The reason that we do that is that um, if you make a mark on a piece of paper um, it has expression, it's thick, it's thin, um, it's irregular and so when we're doing designs, if we're using those hand drawings right from the start by the time we get to the finished product, although it's not obvious that they're hand-drawn, um, those little oddities ret are retained and we pick up that and we find it quite comforting. So a lot of drawing involved in the design process. Once we've developed a design for a customer, we will then send that out as a full-size paper layout um, for them to look at, approve, make any amendments. And then once that they're happy with it, we're happy with it, we'll then move forward to proofing it on silk. It's at this stage that a lot of work goes into the colouring of the design, um, be it as a screen print or digital. Um, we're then really working on that individual design and trying to get the best possible print out of it. Um, that can involve a lot of toing and froing, a lot of development work. If a design is to be printed as a screen print, then we need to actually cut screens. With screen printing, you need one screen for each colour in the design. So the first stage is to separate out each colour. We do that using sheets of film, um, either hand tracing out the colours or doing them individually on computer, so that we end up with a series of sheets of film, each one with a separate colour on it. These are called positives and these are what we use to make the screens. The screens consist of a metal frame um, with a taut nylon mesh stretched over them um, and they come to us just as open mesh screens. The first thing we must do is coat the screen with a photosensitive emulsion and then we let that dry. We then will take one of our positives and lay it with the screen and then we blast the whole thing with ultraviolet light and what happens is that where the light passes through the clear areas of the positive and hits the emulsion on the screen it reacts and it makes it go solid. 
Where the light can't get through, then those areas will remain water soluble and we can just wash those away. So that's how we photographically transfer the image onto the screen surface. We make all our own dye recipes here at Beckford. We start off with a basic range of dye powders and from those we are creating literally thousands and thousands of different colours. The human eye can actually differentiate between about three million colours and shades of colour. So with any new design, the chances of us having the right combination of colours in, in our library is fairly remote. So we are often making new recipes. Um, it's an ongoing process. It's quite a black art um, and it very much is a recipe and you're cooking with colour so it's a few grams of this, a few grams of that together producing a finished colour. We have books and books of recipes going back over 40 years um, and so every new project we are always building on what we've done before, building on that experience and that colour library. There are now two types of printing um, and we do both of them at Beckford Silk. The first is screen printing and we've been doing that for over 40 years. Um, the more modern technique of printing is digital but firstly we'll explain how we do our screen printing. The first thing to do is to lay the silk on the table. Our print tables are very long and very flat and the silk is anchored at one end and then pulled straight so that the weft is straight and then just secured with masking tape, just lightly tensioned so that the silk is flat on the table. With any design it has to be registered and we do that with the use of bolts along the table which are measured out depending on the size of the print. When we come to print the screen itself has a piece of metal that sticks out from the edge and this will sit, sit up against this bolt to register it left to right and then the two adjustable bolts on the edge of the screen register it up and down. So each time the screen will go down in exactly the right place on the print. The actual print process um, is fairly continuous. Um, we take our, one of our screens, we then pour the dye into the well and the dye is made up of the colour held in gum for printing. So it's quite a thick, gloopy paste. Um, and this allows the dye to go through the screen and just sit on the surface of the silk so that it doesn't run. And colour by colour, one screen at a time, we print down the table, carefully placing and then lifting the screen. At this stage, obviously the print is fresh and wet and if you run your fingers through that, it will smudge. However, once we've done the first colour, we can then wash the screen out uh, take our next screen with the next colour and although the print is not completely dry, by carefully placing the screen down we can then go on with the next colour. This is a continuous process until the print is complete. Once the print has been completed, then the tapes are taken off and the whole piece of silk is lifted up above the table and left to dry out completely. Um, the next piece of silk can then be laid down for the next print. At this stage, if the print comes into contact with water, then those colours will run because they've not yet been fixed. We now need to fix the colour into the silk and that's the next major process. With digital printing, we are printing from a computer file straight through a machine onto specially treated silk. With this type of printing, the first process is to coat the silk and we're coating it with a mixture of gum and chemicals um, so that these will then combine with the inks actually on the silk. These are the same gum and chemicals that we use in the dye mix for screen printing. The digital machine itself, um, if you just press the buttons and let it do what it wants to do, will produce a pretty mediocre print. The real skill with digital printing, of course, is in the development of the design, in the preparation work and in the fine tuning, in the proofing stage. Every single file that we have reacts completely differently um, and so there is as much human skill involved in digital printing as there is in screen printing. Um, the only difference between the two processes is in the way that the ink is transferred actually onto the silk itself. The digital machine 
is just a very complicated version of the little printer that you probably got sat at home. Um, these machines in fact started off as paper printers and have been converted to work with textiles. So we have a slightly sticky belt and the coated silk is um, basically fed on to this sticky belt. The trick of course is to get this fabric as straight as possible because it go, if it goes off the grain and you print a silk square that is slightly off then when it comes to finishing it it'll be a very wavy edge and all over the place. So it's the simplest things which in fact are the most difficult to achieve with digital printing. Once the silk is starting to pass through the machine and the printer prints at about a meter and seven minutes uh, the heads are just running backwards and forwards and they are delivering thousands and thousands of tiny, tiny droplets of ink. And we're using a combination of eight different inks in this type of printing. As the belt moves and the print is slowly built up, it then passes down and we've got a, a dryer that is drying the print before it goes onto the roll below. Uh, once we've done this, it's now ready to go through the rest of the processing, in other words, the steaming and the washing to fix the colour. Once we have completed the prints and they are completely dry, then they have quite a papery consistency to them because, of course, they're still full of gum from the printing. We then load them up onto what's called a star frame. So we start at the centre, spiralling out and hook the edge of the silk onto the little pins um, in a spiral outward motion and we also place a layer of calico between the layers of silk so that it doesn't touch. This is then hoisted up and transferred down into a pressure steamer which sits in the corner in a large pit. And then in the steam, and they steam for about 40 minutes, what happens is that the fibre of the silk opens up and the dye molecules actually transfer into the silk fibre. The gum molecules, which initially hold the dye, are much, much larger and so they can't get in and they're left on the outside. So once this process has been completed, we can then take the lengths of silk, wash them on our winches, wash away all the gum residue and then you're just left with the natural feel of the silk with the colour trapped inside it. Once the colour has been fixed into the silk um, and the gum has been washed out, then the next stage is to finish the silk. The way that we used to do this was that we would cut the scarves up into their squares, we would lay them out onto an old press and press them to get the creases out. Um, this was quite time consuming and of course things got bigger and longer and so we spent many years hand ironing everything to finish. Um, which is very time consuming and doesn't give a particularly good finish. We now use a very old piece of equipment called a clip stenter. This machine is over a hundred years old um, and we were very lucky to get it from a company in the north of England. It consists of two rotating chains um, the whole thing is adjustable to width depending on the width of the silk that we're putting through it and it tapers in at the one end. What we do is we now take our silk that we've washed, we've um, got most of the moisture out of it but it's still damp and it comes through and we start feeding it on to the two inner chains and the way that the clips work is that as it pulls out from them the rings drop down into the grooves and so it's caught right on the selvage edge. It then is pulled out to its correct width and then it passes through the infrared oven which draws all the moisture out of the fabric so that by the time it comes off at the other end it's perfectly flat, finished, it's rearranged the warp of the weft, straightened it all out and no creases. Before they used machines such as this then the technique was to take the fabric out to the fields and use tent pegs um, to peg it out, let it dry in the sun and as it dried and it would shrink and again take the creases out. So you do get place names around the country, tenter field, and also to be on tenter hooks comes from this process. Once we have um, gone through the entire process, then we check all the prints to make sure that there are no faults and any faults are pulled out. The final stage is in the finishing of the edges. And for silk scarves, the traditional finishing is hand rolling. 
We have a small group of local ladies who come in on a weekly basis to pick up a number of scarves that they will then take home and do as piecework. We do have the largest group of hand rollers in the country um, and it is very, very specialist and specialised work. Um, they're a very skilled group of ladies. They will sit at home and hand roll and a good lady will get through about three 90 centimetre scarves in an hour. Uh, one of our top ladies can do about four and a quarter in an hour. Once the scarves have been finished, either hand rolled or machine hemmed, then they're back to us and a final brush over with an iron before they're individually packed into either our customers packaging or our own packaging and then they go out for sale. So I hope you've enjoyed your little tour of Beckford Silk and perhaps have a greater insight into what we do here. Um, next time you're in a museum shop, perhaps you'll pick up that scarf and think of us because it's almost certainly been made here at Beckford. And also perhaps appreciate just how much work goes into them. Mm -hmm.